1965, the um, Newfoundland and Labrador Women's Institute will be celebrating their 60th anniversary. And I think when it comes to 60th, it's called the Diamond Jubilee. And with me right now, I have Anne Smith. And uh, Anne is presently a member of the Newfoundland and Labrador Women's Institute. And, and maybe you could uh, give us a little bit of brief history of uh, the Institute. And maybe you could start off by telling us when it was formed and uh, why. Well, it all started back in uh, 1929 when uh, there was a tidal wave and the wife of the Governor An Anderson of that time, Lady Anderson, she formed a service league to help with the victims. Mm -hmm. And uh, from when there was no need of that service league, uh, she formed uh, a group called the Jubilee Guilds. The name was, it was uh, formed in 1935 and uh, the name was taken, that was the year of the late King George V's Silver Jubilee, so that's why they chose to name Jubilee Gills. So in 1945 they uh, joined the Associated Country Women of the World and in 1968 they joined the Feder Federated Women's Institute of Canada and so it was that year that we changed our name from Jubilee Gills to the Newfoundland and Labrador Women's Institutes. So did this organization originally get its beginnings in Newfoundland or was there other branches in Canada before no, it started here? Uh, it was. It all started in Canada in Stony Creek, Ontario and were modeled after the Women's Institute in England. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am a member of the 95 anniver anniversary committee and uh, there were a lot of suggestions from all our branches uh, across the province just how we would celebrate 95 and one of the suggestions was to get in touch with our roots which is Jubilee Gill. So we decided that we would contact uh, any living members of Jubilee Gills and later on this evening you will be interviewing a few ladies from Placentia area and Placentia Bay. And uh, How long have you been involved in, it, in uh, the Jubilee Gill? Uh, well, I, I was a member in the 70s, and then I rejoined again about six years ago. I'm a member of the Dunville branch. And so how many members are there approximately in Newfoundland altogether? Uh, well, I don't know the exact number, but there are hundreds. Yeah. It's, it's a provincial organization. And basically, do they do the same uh, work uh, today as they did when it was first started 60 years ago? Uh, there are some changes, but it, it's uh, to help make a better life in the home, the community, and develop leadership. I see. Okay, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk with us this evening and we'll just continue on now in a moment and talk to some of the ladies who have been with the Guild or have known people that have been with the Guild since their, its beginning. Okay, with me now is uh, Kit Murphy uh, yes. and even though uh, Kit wasn't actually a member of uh, the Jubilee Guild when it was formed, she's going to tell us her connection with it. Yes, well, it was formed by my mother. Uh, Lady Walwyn's idea it was, and she got in touch with the people and my mother and Lady Walwyn. She was out in Crescentia quite a bit. I remember her in our living room. But okay. And uh, she started, the idea was to knit socks and do needlework and different handwork right. uh, so for the women to give them an occupation and a source of some income. I see. And so your, your mother then was one of the founding members? So. She founded, she started. And what and was she, her name? Neela Murphy. Okay. And she, she got the groups together and formed the association. Mm -hmm. And they got the, they used to get the wheel, wool and the materials from the Jubilee Gills and they'd send it out and the women in the area would do the work and bring it in to mother and she'd ship it off into uh, well, whoever the headquarters, no, they, they had a headquarters, they had a place on Water Street in St. John's, okay. opposite Bowerings. Do you know what year it was formed here? Uh, it was in the 30s, in the 30s. now yeah. when it was, I don't know. And uh, the but first I, branch here, was I that I think it was the late 30s, you was know, it? it might be 35 or 6. I see. But, um, I've uh, seen at the uh, museum in uh, Placentia, the O'Reilly House Museum, there's a quilt there that was done yeah, by the ladies. Done too. By the Jubilee Guild. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, now, uh, my mother designed the quilt. I see. Uh, she wanted a histor history of Placentia in, uh, uh, in needlework. Oh, I see. So she designed the different sections, and my father did the drawings for her yeah. the ships and the train and 
the different um, things and she did it in blocks each one and then she had the fleur de lis for the French yeah. and the rose for the English and it was done in blocks each picture uh, each block represented yes, something yes represented the ship or uh, the train uh, the coming of the railway mm-hmm. and the churches the two churches yeah, the Anglican and the, mm-hmm. and the Catholic Church and the, the steamers yeah, and, uh, and the boats and can you remember now any of the ladies' names that were involved uh, with your mother in the making of that yes, quilt? Mrs. Maroney. This is Margaret Maroney, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Margaret Maroney. Anne O'Keefe. Mrs. Uh, Blanche, George Blanche's mother. Uh, Pauline Blanche. Mm-hmm. Uh, Annie Whalen. Uh, Hannah McHugh. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said Mrs. Bruce, didn't I? Yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Quilty. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Stennessy, who used to live yes, up in the Yeah. Yes. And so I guess then you can remember these ladies at your house with your mother making that oh, quilt? Oh, yes, I, I remember them there, you know, and, and working together. And they used to do the knitting, the socks. They knitted an awful lot of socks for the... For the and they used to get the wool out and they'd knit the socks and send them back in. But now you yourself, you were never a member of no, the guild. No, I wasn't because I was young at the time right. and I was, I was working in St. John's really, and I was back and forth home, you know. I, I don't remember if I were home at the time, and I, I don't think I was. Had I been, I think I would have been involved. I'm sure you would have. Yes. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add to this? Well, we're going maybe before um, this video is finished, uh, we might get that quilt and have you point out all the different uh, pa- parts, parts of it and the significance, yeah. Yeah, because I was looking at it at the museum. There's really a wonderful um, Yes, it is, a, it is meant to be a pictorial history yeah. of the century. Yeah. That and, uh, is the idea. The ladies now that you mentioned, um, they were all from the Jersey side part oh, of yes. it, were they? It wasn't the century, it was Jersey side. Yeah. It was a Jersey side guild. Oh, I see. And it was strictly Jersey side and Donville. Not yeah. Donville so much as in Cove yeah. and Ferndale and Freshwater. Yeah. Okay. That it was, okay. you know, the ferry boat was on the gut then and the, in the winter time it was hard yeah. to get back and forth. So I guess they must have put a lot of work into the work, not only with the quilt, but with other activities. Oh yes, ladies they then. they did the mostly knitting, yeah, and um, the sweaters and yeah. uh, you know different knitting things was it was their project mostly, wasn't it? Mrs. Mrs. Quilty knows. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to talk to Mrs. Quilty now in a second yes. too. <laughs> yes, to do them. yes. Well, Miss Murphy, I want to thank you very much for talking to us this evening. We really well. appreciate coming into your home. That's thank very, you. You're very welcome. Okay, now we're talking to uh, Mrs. Aggie Murphy, the former, I think, Aggie Quilty from uh, Presentia, and uh, maybe you can tell us your association with the Guild. Were you ever a member, uh, Mrs. Murphy? Yes, I was a member. And how long, when was that? I shouldn't ask you that, should I? <laughs> I was probably in 1937. I see. And for how long were you? Uh, uh, well, I was probably a year, because I left home in 1938. I see. And after that, I didn't have much to do with it because... No. You get away from things when you yeah. even then when yeah. you leave home. Yeah. But uh, your mother now, uh, Mrs. Jane Quilty, she was a member? Oh, yes. She was a member. Re- really active in it, you know. Yeah. And uh, what were some of the things that you can remember uh, the ladies doing there in the guild? Can you include No, yourself? it's too long ago. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> but I know we had... Uh, once we used to, One summer, I know, I went to St. John to the group. We went to a summer school. I see. But we did a lot of uh, learning how to do things, you know. So there was some training for the m- oh people? Oh, yes, yes. Several people. I know I was one and Gordon Brin was another. But he's dead now. I can't remember. You might remember that. Um, and we went in there. We had, you had weaving, you know. And so some of us had to do different things. I see. But it was only for s- four weeks yeah. or something. But it even so, it was some, it was some mm. form of training. Well, yeah. they showed a lot of, mm-hmm. lot of young people how to do things. And uh, can you remember how long your mother would have been involved in it? Uh, no, I really can't. No. Because when, like, when I left home in 1938, I see. and I came back then in 1940 and got married, so, so after that I don't remember. You were busy enough then? Yeah. 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 Okay, Ms. Murphy, thanks for talking with us. Yeah, well. Okay. And on this side of me here, uh, Mrs. Annie Follett. And you were also... Uh, turn around here a little bit now. Hang on. <laughs> 
You were also one of the earlier members of the guild? Yes. And when did you join? Can you remember? 1940. We had the guild formed. Yeah. And uh, was that and um, was that the Jersey side? Were you part of the Jersey side? No, ladies? no, no. I was, I was living in Clinch then. That was out in Clutch Harbour in Clinch Bay. Oh, I see. Yeah. So they had a branch there yeah. also? Yeah. And all their settlements around too, you know, had... Uh, uh, oh, I see. And uh, can you remember some of the activities or some of the things that you did as a member of the guild? But we did sewing and weaving. We uh, we raised money and bought a, a loom. I see. And uh, they did a lot of weaving and knitting. And and so the things that you made, um, were they given to people that needed them or did you sell no, them? No, the people that made the things made them for their own use. Oh, I see. Uh, a few things like scarves and, that, and, you know, they just made those for their own use. Yeah. And how long did you stay involved with the guild? Well, uh, I stayed, uh, I came in here to live now and to still there. Yeah. But not as good, you know, because when the base started, you see, that broke up everything. Yeah. The men, the men were all taken away, and the women had no babysitters, and so yeah, that, quite that disturbed the whole thing. Yeah. So I guess, like, maybe some ladies back then became members for a bit of oh, friendship. Yes, and yes. Uh, That's, that was, yeah, we used to meet uh, once a week, and, you know, and um, once a monthly meeting, once a month. And right. And where would uh, these meetings take place? In, Just in, in school. Oh, in the in schools, school. yeah. And like when you were involved in making the crafts and the quilts, uh, did you make them at home yourselves or did you all get together in one place and share? Yeah, we had the, the looms in school and we had a carter and we had bought that too, my dad in school. And so do you still keep in touch with some of the ladies that you uh, that were in the guild when you first started? No, there's no one around. <laughs> some were young girls, you know, yeah. just out of school. Now yeah. they, uh, like Mrs. Murphy said, they went yeah. to St. John's and did took yeah. a training there and so as your lives took different turns everybody just yes, kind of got yes. distant from each other I they see. went away and got married and all the rest of it yeah. okay miss father thank you very much for talking to us this evening we appreciate it Okay, I think there on your camera now we have a, a couple of pictures there, and um, we're back with Mrs. Uh, Kit, uh, with uh, Kit Murphy, and she's going to uh, tell us about those pictures. Which picture? Oh, my mother's picture. Yes, that was taken in the mid 1930s, and uh, that is what she, as she was when she was president of the Jubilee Guild. Mm -hmm. And the other one then would be. And the other one is my dad. Uh, that was taken in New York in uh, about 1922. I see. So um, it's ten years earlier. All right. So, um, um, Kit, you were telling us that uh, besides uh, getting the Jubilee Guild started here in uh, this area, your mother also was involved in getting a couple of other organizations started. You want to tell us a little bit about that? She was involved in the. His, she started the Historic Society. She was very interested in the history of Castle Hill and Mount Pleasant and the French occupation. And she did. She was in touch with the Carnegie Institute. And there was a Dr. Brooks from the Carnegie Institute was down here a couple of summers. That was prior to the war. And uh, he was very interested in these features of people and history, you know. Mm -hmm. And I remember he predicted the base coming and he said he gave the whole story of the base only one prediction didn't come through <laughs> he said that uh, there would be a channel from Trinity to Placentia Bay and that the ships would go right up through oh I see that, that one didn't come that through. channel never was never built no um, and okay that was the he was from the Carnegie Institute I see and uh, besides the historical society, she was also in the ladies' auxiliary. Well? Uh, the ladies' auxiliary of the Star of the Sea. She she organized that. And she was the first president. And uh, these is those three organizations that she was instrumental in starting. There are still in still, still functioning today. Very much so. Yes. yes that's true. Uh, uh, the chair that you're sitting in there. I don't know if you could stand just for a minute. We could get a picture. Do you want to tell? Uh, that chair was an old chair. I don't know where it came from, but my mother did the needlework, and uh, my dad did the upholstery. He put put it together for her and put it together. And, but that is my mother's own. Now this is not look at her, as you can see the seat, but that's her own design on the back. Oh, I see. So she designed this herself. She designed that herself. Yeah. And then she did all and this needlework. This here is a copy of it. 
Okay, the little picture on the wall we have there then is a copy of this. And <laughs> you want to sit back here and tell us about that? <laughs> tell us about that little picture, the story behind that. I think you told it to us earlier. <laughs> yes, when I was in St. John's, I had this chair and I wanted to put a picture on the wall in the blank place on the wall behind the chair. And I had this frame. So I went out in the kitchen, I got my paints, and in 10 minutes I slapped together <laughs> the design on the back of the chair, and I hung it up with, and it's been up ever since. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good likeness for a job that was done in haste. It's lovely. Yes, and, 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 and dry it on the wall. <laughs> OK, uh, Kit, thank you very much for sharing those thoughts with us. I'll show you a picture now. Okay, we are talking here now with Mrs. Della O'Leary, and Mrs. O'Leary is also a member of the uh, Newfoundland Labrador's Women's Institute, and I'm going to ask her, when did you first join Mrs. O'Leary, and what branch were you belong to? In, in the uh, Jubilee Guild, you mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah in September 1935, mm -hmm. in Red Island, Jeez. in Placentia Bay. All right. Yeah. And, um, and I was secretary of the thing at the time. I was just 15 when we were going to school. How did you get interested in it? Like, uh, were you always interested? Well, I was in always interested in crafts. Yeah. You know, so it was nice to be able to learn to weave and, you know, do tatting and everything. So, do you uh, remember the names of any of the ladies that were also involved at that time? Any you of, you uh, mean the members? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, nearly all of them. I can tell you, they're all gone. Nellie and Orin, now my sister-in-law. Yeah. You know, she, you knew Nell. She was there. And my sister, my two sisters, my mother, and three or four of my aunts, and then there was our friends as well. I, see. I think we had 27 members I see. when we started. So when did you, when you moved in from Red Island, when was that? Can, uh, well, I went to St. John's now, okay. then. And uh, did you and still I keep? I used to knit for the Women's Institute then, you know. I see. And Nonia. So even though uh, when you moved from Red Island, you still kept up with your craft oh yes. the Women's Institute? Yes, I still, everywhere I went, there was one I was, I was there. When I came back here, there was neither one. No. So we formed one. I got into contact with Mrs. Parsons and asked her to come out, and she did. I see. Yeah. Can you remember some of the projects or some of the things that you're involved in? Uh, uh, in Mid Island? Special? Yeah. Yeah, well, we used to um, make baby clothes for anyone who, who got pregnant, you know, right. we always did that. And we hooked rugs. Well, we used to hook rugs all the time, but the ones who didn't know, we used to teach them. And uh, Miss uh, Herridge and Templeton showed us how to weave. So I we see. used to weave a lot of materials. And we, we did knitting and, well, we did mitts and gloves and everything for men and women and everything, I you know. See. So and you didn't sell these items then, did you? Just oh, no, we just, the yes, that's right. Shared among yeah, each other. That's I right, see. yeah. Um, do you still keep in, no, do, uh, I think, did you tell me you still keep in touch with somebody that was in the guild with you? Or? No. Yeah, well, my, she's down in Southern Harbour now, Julia Best. I see. And uh, she was in with us and, yeah. uh, and Betty Spurvey in Fox Harbour. And I don't know of anyone else around now that, like I said, I could name up a dozen that already died, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you have here in your hand then a booklet, um, 
I think the Jubilee Guild was first started or in Stony Creek, uh, Ontario, is it? The Women's Institute. The Women's Institute. Yeah, because we went with them in 51, was it? Nifnan went 68 or changed, changed from Jubilee Guilds to the Women's Institute because the Women's Institute was started in 1897. I see. In Stony yeah. Creek. And, and this and picture and here is... This the lady, Adelaide Hoodles, that started the Women's Institute in, in 1897. And that's the Earl and Lee home, they call it now. That that was her home. Okay. And it turned into the uh, Julie Gillis. And that's the front of the house, the Earl and Lee house there. Okay. And then this is a plaque that was around there on something. And these are the gardens. And I brought home some flowers and dried them from there. I see. Uh, so the you, when you visited Stony Creek, then you visited this place? And oh, yes. Yeah, yeah oh, I I'll see. Well, that's what we went there for. Oh, I see. You know. Okay. Yeah. Um, There's Miss Templeton there, well. Alright, I don't know if we can pick this up on camera or not, because, uh, alright. Yeah. So, uh, Ms. O'Leary, are you still involved in making crafts now? Like, do you still do very much now, today? Uh, oh, well, I don't do very much since no. I came out of hospital, but right. I'll be getting back at it again. Yeah. We've already taken some video here of the beautiful things you have in your room here. Are these yeah. all collector's items, or I'll have you actually made some of these? No, any of these? I haven't made any of them. No? No. I see. I'm after making hundreds of things, but I, don't, I haven't got the thing here that I made. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we have, uh, I think we're just going to get some more shots here. In this album here, then, um, let me just move this one aside for a minute. I think I've seen a lot of collections of a lot of things in my life, but I don't quite think I've ever seen uh, this type of a collection. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this, uh, uh, Ms. O'Leary? I have since 1943. I think we better tell them what, what, what we're collecting what here we first. But yeah. They're uh, handkerchiefs. Yeah. Okay, I have yeah. them from all over. What got you interested in this type of a... Well, I had uh, four or five given me, and, and I just put them into a box, and then as I got more and more and more, people used to give them me for Christmas, and then they were in boxes yeah. of threes, some of them. Yeah. yeah. And some of them are handmade, like this one here. Okay. Is there any either one there now, like, more special or more memories attached to it than another, or...? Yeah, or well, I'll show you that now. That you could uh, point out there? They're all beautiful. beautiful, exceptionally so. Yeah. Well, I will get over to what I'll show yeah. you. And, um, this from is Ireland? Yeah, this is from Ireland. And this is from Switzerland. My daughter brought that to me. And that's from Montreal. I see. That one's from Ireland. These and are beautiful. Those, those three, a friend of mine from uh, Churchill Falls sent me for Christmas one year. Okay. And uh, my daughter-in-law gave me those from Montreal. And this one, a lady from uh, Springdale. Was oh, she play? involved with the ladies? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. there's uh, one grandmother, grandmother yeah. grandkids yeah. gave me. And this one I got from Toronto from a lady for Christmas one year. And mother, these are from my daughters. Oh, right, yeah. That's my little grandson. He told me not, to, let, not, to, he told me not to dirt it off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, this uh -huh. one here, you know... Oh, uh, Mr. Good. Mrs. John P Pickersgill, they used to be in the government here with yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, she sent me that last Christmas. When she was down, she told me she was going to send it to me. It belonged to her mother. Oh, I yeah, see. And she's 82. Oh, yeah. Nice. So that one's special. Yes, I'm sure it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. And that one there is from Ireland. A friend of mine, Mrs. O'Leary, sent me that one. I don't know where I got that one. Well, it's, oh, quite a, it's quite a collection yeah. you have there. It certainly is. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 And mm -hmm. see those here, those are special. I had those from Brazil. Mm. And Switzerland? And Switzerland, mm -hmm. yeah. They brought me that from Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So now all these uh, people like that gave you these, are these people you met through the, uh, uh, the guild or the institute? No, or just through traveling most. Just uh, traveling, yeah, I see. Traveling mostly, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, this one here, <laughs> that's hand done by a lady in um, South Carolina. I see. Yeah. And those I had for Christmas gifts. Yeah. I want to get to the other one then. That's the one a real old lady gave me down in Southern Harbor. Okay. That's one I had given me a Christmas. It's pretty, remind you of a butterfly. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's about 40 years yeah. old. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, some of these are quite old. Oh, yes, they yes, are. Yes, I'm quite sure. Old, yes. Lovely. Okay. And uh, yeah. those I got for yeah. a birthday when I was 50. So they're 23 years old. So now we know, everybody knows how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't bother me. No, it's okay. Um, this one here is from Brussels, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. my daughter brought me that yes, from Brussels it? last year. Yeah. And those, uh, no, those, those two came from... Uh, Pretty colours. Um, mm. Yeah. 
not Church of uh, Labrador City. Okay. Yeah, a friend of mine was down there. This Good. one I was selling Dilly Dally. I got this in 1942. <laughs> and, uh, mm-hmm. and they went... Uh, to get their Christmas gifts, and he saw it, and he said, "Oh, he said, we'll get that." And so I had a letter from his wife saying that he don't, she don't know how we found it, but she said we found one dilly dally, and he used to be telling. And her, who was know, it that gave you this one? Mr. Honeyman. I see. Mr. Mrs. Honeyman, yeah, yeah, from the states. From U.S. Yeah, yeah. they sent in a Christmas card in 1942. Oh, well, that one's quite old, yeah. also. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I should have had that in the front, yeah. really. Yeah, it's quite nice. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well, Mr. Leary, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us this evening and having us in your home. It's all right, because I can't go away. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got the most beautiful collection of things here. I think we've got a lot of them on video, and um, I want to thank you yeah. very much. Oh, you're quite welcome. Okay, quite welcome. Oh. Um, good evening once again. In, we're still continuing our interviews with some of the ladies that were involved in the, the Jubilee Guild in the beginning years. And this evening uh, we're at the home of Mrs. Hilda O'Keefe in Placentia. We want to thank her for having us in your home to do this little interview. And uh, Mrs. O'Keefe, maybe you can s- we can start off by having you uh, tell us how you got involved with the Jubilee Guild and where and whatever. Uh, well, uh, I first became interest in the, Ju- in the Jubilee Guild after I went to Springdale in 1952. I went there to open the new hospital and uh, didn't know very many people around there. Didn't know anyone, in fact. And uh, one day we were at the hospital unpacking furniture and so on, and this lady came up to visit and uh, Mrs. Jessie Young. Okay. So she invited us over to her house for <coughs> dinner. And uh, during the dinner, we, the conversation came around to different activities in the town. And uh, at that time, she was president of Jubilee Guild, the branch there. And uh, she began to tell us about it and ask us if we'd like to join. So we said, uh, well, what really do you do? I had never been anywhere where there was a branch of the Jubilee Guild, so I didn't know anything about it. She explained what they were doing, weaving and all sorts of crafts and knitting and crocheting and almost anything you could mention. Somebody in the Guild was doing it. So she asked us if we'd like to join, and we said, oh, yes, certainly another nurse with me. So we went down the next meeting night, which was Thursday night, and was amazed at the things they were doing there. Mostly the weaving. Mm -hmm. There was a Mrs. Clark there, and I often think of her. Really, she was a a designer. She should have been a designer. She did the most beautiful designs uh, for different Mm -hmm things they were weaving. And uh, I have some placemats there that her designs are in. I borrowed loom from the guild and did some weaving in my spare time at the hospital. And uh, we found it very interesting. So was there very many members when at that time when you were there? Uh, they had about uh, 30... Uh, in the 30s, yeah. 37, 38, I think, yeah. quite a few members. And uh, I also did some leather work there. So, like, was there any training for any of this, or did you just do, like, what you knew how to do yourself? Was there uh, any training program? No, uh, different guild members helped each other. If you wanted to do something, uh, there was someone there who could do it and show you. I see. They were very good, I must say. Okay, we're just going to take a look at the... Mrs. O'Keefe was mentioning some of the uh, placemats or whatever. Maybe you can just These point These placemats now. They were done at Springdale and uh, a guild. These I did for Christmas, the placemats. You can see here the pattern. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. It's done silver and red. And it's one of Mrs. Clark's designs. She did the design for it. Is that there? And... Uh, 
That's so it. these were some of the first things you did when you joined the guild there in Springdale? Yes, Hill? these okay. were some of the first ones. You still kept them all these years? Oh, yes. <laughs> they got quite a bit of use, uh, too. Yeah, I'm sure. And, uh, and uh, these are some others in a different pattern. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. They're beginning to wear, but then they're over 40 years old. So that's to be expected. <laughs> to be expected. Yeah, These are the serviettes. Yeah. We need to match them. So how long did you remain a member of the guild for the length of time that you were in Springdale? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I left again in 1953, so I was in there yeah. about a year and a half. And uh, did you keep uh, up like with the guild membership in the other places that you went after that? No, uh, I didn't. I came here and there I was see. no guild here at that time. I see. Okay. And um, so what kind of, of course, <coughs> you've told us some of the activities that you're involved in. The crafts and so on that you made there at the guild in Springdale, were they for your own benefit or were they sold or were they just given to people that needed or? Well, I, I borrowed loom from the guild and set it up in the sewing room in the hospital and I used to weave in my spare time. <coughs> but uh, you, you could weave and sell it. The guild members did whatever they did over and above what they wanted for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. They would sell. Yeah. They'd have a sale every year. And were these funds then gone to charity or just to buy some more materials to make more items? Yes. Uh, no, I think uh, they gave a percentage to charity and the rest, rest went back to the members. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, do you see any, of course, now you're not involved in the guild here now, are you in Placentia? No. No, but I was involved in the Women's Institute until last year yeah. it closed out here and... Uh, we carried on doing some same things that you I had done out there. You still keep up with your crafts. I think earlier you showed us a tablecloth that you, oh, you yes. made and mm -hmm. you won a prize for that? That's right, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, is there anything else you'd like to add, Miss O'Keefe, before we finish the interview about the Guild? Do you think it's a good thing for young people or young women? Oh, I think or it's marvelous. Age? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's really wonderful. It's a great le learning okay. experience. Yeah. You. Uh, Guild members, I always found, now I I only knew them in Springdale, right. but yeah. I found they were very good at helping each other. Yeah. And that's and, what it's all about, I guess. And that's really yeah. wonderful, I think. Okay. Thank you very much for having us in your home this evening and talking to us. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Okay. Okay, I have with me now um, Mrs. May Flynn uh, from Fox Harbor now. And uh, Mrs. Flynn, maybe you can tell us uh, where you first got involved with the Guild. Where, where were you from and when you got involved in it? Uh, I was in Clutters Harbor. That's where my home was, a little settlement in St. Bay. It's about 25, 26, 27 families. I see. Um, my mother was involved. She used to go, and I used to go with her. I was only a youngster then, about 13 years old, I suppose, around there. But uh, they used to do a lot of stuff like um, used to play games, used to sing songs, used to... Uh, um, I don't know how they used to get the material for quilts, but everybody would get their square of material. Right. And their yeah. pattern to bring home. Yeah. And each one had to do their square in the stairs, all the stairs. Oh, yes, I've seen some like that, yeah. And mm -hmm. when you get it all done, you bring it all back, and the next time the field worker would come, the field worker would come to the to, to Atlantis Harbor. Right. And uh, they would show you what to do and uh, tell you what to do and all that. And uh, and we had a loom, like Mrs. Uh, O'Keefe said, we had a loom also, and we used to do some weaving, but wasn't much we could do with it because I was in love as a youngster. Yeah. But... Uh, used to make some material for scarves and uh, for hoods at that time. The pixie hoods were really... Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. ...big thing at that time. Yeah. And uh, they used to do knitting. Now, I don't know if this is exact what I'm going to say or not, but it seems like they used to knit for the, uh, socks for the boys overseas. Yes, I've heard that before, yeah. And mm -hmm. it had to be navy blue. The wool was distributed among the women, not me. I didn't know how to do it. Yeah. But uh, there had to be a certain length in the length, leg, legs and a certain length in the vamps, and there had to be a double heel. I see. Mm -hmm. First time I ever saw a double heel in my life, I hadn't got a clue how to do it. <laughs> but uh, and then the these were sent overseas. I guess so. Yeah, in, in bulk, and you get so yeah. many pair, and it did put them yeah. all together. Yeah. 
So I guess besides being uh, crafts, making crafts and stuff, this was like a little get together for the ladies also. Yes. You mentioned singing and yeah, a little chat. Yeah, but play yeah. games and yeah. uh, stuff like that, you know. And uh, so after you left Cladis Harbour, did you continue with the guild? Uh, no. After you came. No. In here? When I left Cladis Harbour, I went to work in Placentia, and there was right. no guild there. And then after that. Years after that, then I got married and went to paradise to live, and there was no guild up there That's either. That's right. I understand, like, I think there was a lot of uh, small communities in Placentia Bay that had guilds uh, back I in those th days. I think so, yeah, I yeah. think so, because uh, the other lady I was ta you're telling about, Mrs. Fowler, she belonged to the next little community, and Right. It, you know. Yeah. So and uh, as you said earlier about the quilts, it must have been difficult back then to get materials, I mean, for quilts and the like. All I know, it was a it was white background. I don't know whether it was... Material you'd get, or if you find your own, but I don't think you'd find your own material. But for the yeah. stars, for the pattern for the stars, you would find your own material for that, yeah. little bits, and cut them out. Yeah. And, you know, put them all together and join them. Yeah. And so were you an active member of the Guild yourself, or was you just helping out your mother, kind of thing? Well, really, I was mostly just going with my mother yeah. and taking part in the games yeah. or in the singing the songs yeah. or whatever would be going on, you know. But I had done my part of my quilt, too. Sure, I'm sure you did. <laughs> okay, Miss Flynn, thank you very much for talking to us this evening. We appreciate it. Pleasure. Okay, we're s here now. We have a Kit Murphy again, and uh, I think we, we were talking to you uh, in our last interviews about the quilt that the Jersey Side ladies uh, have made when the guild first started That's in right, this yes. area. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to be doing now uh, shortly is leaving here, and we're going to go down to the O'Reilly House Museum and have a look at the quilt, and uh, Kit is going to uh, explain all about the quilt uh, to us there. Okay, we're here now at O'Reilly House Museum in uh, Placentia, and uh, on the screen there in front of you is um, the historic quilt that we talked about earlier, and in a few minutes we're going to get uh, Ms. Kit Murphy to uh, explain it all to us. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the history of the quilt before we talk to Kit. Uh, in the mid in the mid-30s, in the midst of the Depression, isolated from the activities of their parish by the removal of the ferry service across Placentia Gut, the ladies of the Jersey side organized a branch of the Jubilee Guild to be primarily concerned with producing knitted articles and handicrafts in the hope of earning a few much-needed dollars. As the knitting needles flashed, the talk naturally turned to the past and its glories, and from this evolved the idea of a pictorial history of Placentia to be fashioned with needle and thread. After much discussion, a general plan was decided upon, and Mrs. Neela Murphy, president of the Guild, was assigned the task of creating the overall design and completing the individual drawings, which would then be done in needlework by the group. Mrs. Murphy's qualifications consisted of drawing lessons in ink and charcoal whilst a pupil of the Irish sisters and a husband who had a natural aptitude for drawing. Together they worked out the overall design and the detailed drawings to be transferred to the individual squares. The project was then completed by the Guild. Okay, Kit, now maybe you can start explaining to people all about this famous quilt here. Maybe we can start at the centre and well, work your way around. The centre of the quilt is, the large centre is the Union Jack, and in the centre is the monument of the 1914-18 war that's up by the Catholic Church in Placentia, and uh, the names of all those who died in the First World War are inscribed on this monument. So that's in their memory, yes. that's why that's on so the quilt. So up here is the, the William, William's uh, the crown and, and the that's emblem of William IV. This here, or on the top. Okay, start at the outside and work our way in. Now uh, we start over here. Okay. This is the, the uh, Fleur de Lis. I don't know what the one in the corner is. And the floor of leaves are round, and, uh, uh, and on the outside, that's the French, the floor de lis. Represented the French occupation, French, I guess. Uh, no, Placentia. that's just the French, uh, yes, the okay. French occupation. Now, this is uh, Presentia. 1662 to 1713 was the period that was uh, occupied by the French. And these here are uh, the, the French forts. There's 1662, that's Fort Louis, that's on the yeah. Jersey side, here's the gut. Yeah. And this is um, Castle Hill, so this was the French occupation. 
of the census, 16, 62, 17, and 13. Okay. Now we have here on the inside, we have the, this is the rolls. Okay. English, Stand to the side. This is the English rolls. And this is the Irish shamrock. And this here are two fishing boats. And it is hard to see, but these are fishing boats. Uh, that were used by the fisher folks of Placentia because after the French left, the English and uh, took over and uh, yeah. became a fishing village. Uh, this is a, a... Can we just get to the side here a bit now so we can get... They call it a square rigger ship. Mm -hmm. That's an, an, an another one over there. Mm -hmm. Now that one there doesn't say what it is. This one here is a very... And the Newfoundland flag, the pink, white, and green is Newfoundland. And this is the Stars and Stripes, because during the 80s, the, the American bankers used to come down and fish around Newfoundland. And they'd come in to Placentia and to the different ports in Newfoundland. So that is why the American flag is, is there. It was prior to the base, by the way. There's another fishing boat coming in. And there, there's the, she's coming into Placentia from the, the hills between there, arriving in. Now, this is the shamrock here for the Irish and the rose for England. And this is the railroad train which used to come to Placentia one time. And there was a station on the Jersey side and a government wharf and a port of entry for the wit West, the southwest coast was the headquarters were in Placentia at the time and the track used to run out along on the hill on the Jersey side out to the wharf and when the weather would get stormy and uh, uh, out in the roads and be too stormy for the ships to, uh, to uh, live out the storm out there and they'd come in the gutter and I remember one time seeing four coastal boats tied side by side inside the gut in Placentia. And the ice came, no other noise. And they got frozen in. And they were there for six weeks with no coastal service. The boats were off. Uh, mm -hmm. And we were kids at the time. We used to go out and climb up on the ladder and go up. We had full control of the ships because my mother's cousin, Captain Tom Connors, was captain of the Porsche, mm -hmm. and Captain Jack Whalen, our neighbor, was captain of the Daisy. So we had the run of the ships. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, now, the date on the train there was 18 and 89, I guess. 18 and 89 is when it came. So yeah, okay. Think, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, and it went out of it in about 19 and 22. It was moved to Argentia in the early 20s. It was moved to Argentia because Argentia Harbour, as a matter of fact, it should never have been in Placentia where there was no harbour big right. enough to accommodate the coastal boats. And Argentia was the practical place for it. But it was politics, of course. <laughs> Even back then, hey? Yeah. <laughs> oh, back then more than ever. <laughs> now, okay, uh, we have the church. Um, the harp. It's hard to stoop the down. There. Now, here's the Anglican. That's the Anglican, yeah, Chapel. Yeah, Anglican Chapel. Yes, the present Angl Anglican Chapel, which is still there. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, I don't know when that was built, but I know there was, hasn't been a, a presiding minister there for years. But when I was growing up, it was in the care of the Bradshaw family. Mm -hmm. And they had the key and they took care of it. And there is a graveyard around that church in which there are buried. Um, or uh, 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 back in history, yeah. they go back uh, to the, the 1600s, graves, yes, to so the 1600s, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And it was originally a Catholic, okay. and that's where the convent was here on this property. Actually, all this area belonged to it. And the, fr and the Franciscans had a convent here, okay. and the, the Franciscans had the parish here, and they, it was they had the church. I see. Now, okay. And, uh, what would this be here? Is this of any? That's the harp again. Oh, the oh. Irish harp. Oh, the Irish harp. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the maple leaf. They have a maple leaf on it. Oh. Yeah, down here. Yes, that's a maple leaf. Oh, I don't know. Just Maybe somebody had a premonition it was going to be our <laughs> <laughs> national emblem. Yeah. And uh, this 
years that Rose of England began, and this is very much her. Um, mm. That's William's ship. Uh, that's Prince. Prince William Henry, uh, yeah. 1786. Mm -hmm. yeah. This year is the. What would? I gave you the wrong church. That's the Catholic Church. This is the Anglican. This is the Anglican one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's easy to. Yeah. Oh yes. Okay. We see now. That's now, okay. This is the <laughs> church was started by the Irish when the All Irish right. moved in. Mm -hmm. They built that church, and that church was built in. My mother was born in 1884. And she remembers sitting in our father's arms at the opening of the church, say she was four or five. So it must have been started in the early 1800s to be built, okay. which is, brings it up now to 110, 115 years old. I see. Um, now you were telling us earlier also that some of these pictures, like your father, drew, was it your father drew out? Dad drew the boats and the train. Okay. And I. I imagine he would have drawn the monument. Now, uh, these boats, these two, he certainly didn't draw because, <laughs> you know, they're yeah. childish. But um, mother did the design on so it. So then he drew the he drew the pictures, and then yeah. the ladies just embroidered uh, yes, in over that's it right. or whatever. He, he, yeah. he drew the designs, yeah. And uh, um, mother did the design oh, and, mm -hmm. and uh, compiled the. They, well, I think they did a very good job of compiling the history there of Placentia. There's, um, yeah, it is. It certainly is. This rope is done. This is this is supposed to be rope on the outside edge. I think it's something that a lot of time and effort went into, a lot of care. Mm -hmm. It certainly did. Kit, I want to thank you very much for coming here tonight at O'Reilly House and explaining this to us. We appreciate it. You did a great job. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, right now you're looking at a picture of um, the ladies that worked on this quilt we just talked about many years ago, and uh, their names, I don't think that all the ladies that worked on it, their pictures are here, but uh, just to ca name a few of them, uh, Violet Lamb, Ellen Power, Neela Murphy, Annie Mulrooney, Annie Bruce, uh, Nellie Blanche, Angela Shea, Annie Whalen, and uh, Mrs. Nugent, think that's correct there and Hannah Kelly and um, we've been told that uh, they're not all on this photograph but uh, that's the names of some of the ladies that worked on it and uh, if you just Marcella for one second this here is the uh, apparently the original uh, writings uh, in regarding the size of the quilt and the number of blocks and who was going to work on what section etc so this is the original sheet of paper that these ladies used while they were getting their quilt together okay